With all the focus on Colleen Ballinger at the moment, a lot of attention has started to be shifted towards some of the people she surrounds herself with and some members of her family. One of these is Corey, her best friend, who seems to be complicit in a lot of the same behaviours that she's been accused of. Another is her sister Rachel, who you would have seen a lot of in my video about Colleen Ballinger's racism. And another is Trent Ballinger, Colleen's brother. He's been seen engaging in some very damning conversations with people who were underage while he was in his 30s. Conversations that seem to range from just being slightly inappropriate due to the age gap itself to being extremely worrying and even taking an adult turn in a lot of scenarios. I have to make it very clear moving forward that today's video is based on speculation and allegation as well as on opinion, and that this video is not meant to defame or harass anybody. I also know that you guys don't like when I say that things are based on allegation, but I need you to understand that this is a public video and as such I am liable for anything that I say. So just think about that for a minute because I need to say that these things are allegations despite my own personal beliefs in any scenario. Thank you for understanding. One person named Oliver shared their previous conversations with Trent Ballinger on Twitter. And these conversations took place when Oliver was between the ages of 13 to 14 years old and Trent was in his 30s. We're going to be looking at a lot of the messages that Ollie chose to share and we are also going to be talking to them because Oliver very kindly agreed to doing an interview for this video. Like I said, these conversations originally began when Oliver was the ages of 13 to 14 and mainly came about because they were a fan of Colleen Ballinger and Trent seemed to sort of be orbiting that space. I first became, became a fan at the age of I'm gonna say like 10 or 11. Um, obviously I didn't join Twitter at that time, but I eventually later joined Twitter. Um, I was most active in the Twitter fandom from like 2018 to 2019, which also happened to be the years I talked to Trent. Everyone wanted to be followed, not only by Colleen, but also by the family members. Um, so I tweeted Trent and asked him to follow me, um, along with, you know, everyone else. And he did follow me, which I was pretty surprised about. Um, and he began uh, responding to my tweets. Um, eventually, like these were tweets that I wasn't even tagging him in, just random tweets I was tweeting out there, mostly just to my friends at the time that I already made in fandom. Um, but he ended up, um, or no, sorry. I ended up DMing him out of curiosity because people wanted DMs from their family too. So I DMed him out of curiosity and he did respond. Um, and I think I DM'd him maybe two or three more times. I don't even think three, maybe one or two times after. And then it just kind of became a regular thing where he was DMing me first. Even if you take away the content of a lot of these messages, they were always inappropriate, especially considering the age gap between them. And especially just because of the whole power dynamic, like, I idolized Colleen so much. Like, she was my life at the time. Like, I dedicated, I'm gonna say I was at like four shows in 2018. Like, I, and I would travel like six hours for her. Like, I, I, I was like a dedicated fan and to, and to have her brother message me, like, at first that was, it was like, whoa, this is like, that's like really cool. Like, and it was confusing because I was like, I don't know why he's messaging me so much, but like, who wouldn't want to talk to Colleen's brother, you know, if you're in the fandom? Um, and then of course, later it just, it, I did start to feel uncomfortable and I, but I felt like I couldn't really get out of that because it was like, I didn't want the other fandom members to like, hate me or I I was also scared that he was gonna tell Colleen and then Colleen was gonna think the situation and I yeah I didn't really know better I was 13 14 so and Trent seemed to be aware of this even saying don't tell anybody about these conversations they stay between us even pointing out that he's not supposed to be talking to people under the age of 18 and Trent seemed to be well aware of Ollie's age over time, you can see that these messages start to get a lot worse. At first, it was, 
you know, maybe like there'd be like a week in between messages or something. Um, but it pretty quickly within a couple months or so turned into like an almost everyday thing. And then, yeah, it became an everyday thing. It just, it, he definitely got more comfortable over time. Constantly talking about things like Ollie's sexuality. Saying things like, one day you're gonna grow away from me. Even saying that Oliver looked like Trent's ex-girlfriend. He just would bring up... A lot of it had to do with me and my one friend, my best friend at the time, who was also in the Colleen fandom. He would a lot of times say that we were that we looked like we were a couple or we'd be a good couple yet at the same time he like didn't seem to want me to be bisexual so it, it was it was weird like so it, it was like really confusing because like at the time i identified as female so obviously that and my friend was also female so it didn't really add up but I don't know. It was strange. Further down the line, you can also see examples of Trent being quite controlling. When Oliver wanted to take a break from Twitter, Trent wasn't having it. Just saying, no, it's not happening. Trent also never wanted him to go to sleep, wanting him to stay up and talk all night. And when Oliver was saying that their medication was making him sleepy, Trent said, just stop taking it. With the sleeping thing, I mean, my sleep schedule was pretty messed up, and I'm not gonna blame it on him or anything, but he certainly didn't help at all. Because when I was trying to fix my sleep schedule, like, anytime I tried to make the effort to, then it always seemed like I felt like I couldn't. And Trent even commented on things like not wanting Ollie to wear makeup because he didn't like the way it looked. With the makeup thing, I just kind of ignored him and was like, I don't really know why he, I, it was weird, but I was just like, okay, well, I'm gonna keep wearing makeup if I wanted to. I didn't do it that often. I think that's why he, he commented on it whenever I did wear it, because it wasn't that often. It gets so much worse than this, though. There are some really inappropriate messages that Trent sent to Ollie, suggesting that Oliver and their friend had been together. Again, bear in mind that both of these people were underage. I've even looked back through my text and found where we were texting about this, and yeah, me and my friend at the time, we thought it was pretty odd. We were like, why does Trent keep messaging us? And sometimes um, he would message her about me randomly. Um, and yeah, like it wasn't just to me, like he would message her and be like, you know, um, if they ever wanted someone else, like you would have to approve first. And it was, it was just like, it, it, we were confused. It didn't really make any sense to us, but we didn't, over, we kind of just moved on because it kind of seemed normal for him at that point because we got so used to it. There were also many messages of Trent questioning Oliver's sexuality, as we mentioned before, stating that he didn't need to label himself and that they might be wrong about it. And in one extremely disturbing message, says that Oliver would look good pregnant. I'm not quite sure who would have that kind of thought about a child, but clearly the thought was there. Him saying that I would look good pregnant, that still is probably one of the worst messages I, like, that's one of the messages that pops in my head, because I'm like, who would even say that to, like, an another adult? Like, you know? Like, that just doesn't seem normal. In some of Trent's messages, he could be seen asking for different kinds of videos of Oliver. In one specifically asking for a video of them hugging someone, which is, I don't need to tell you, a very strange request. It definitely did seem like off and confusing, but I didn't overly question it because, I mean, he was kind of odd <laughs> a lot. Um, I feel like a lot of these like red flags that there were, I just kind of brushed over them because I was like, oh, well, he's just kind of like this or, you know. Um, I didn't overly question at the time. I remember thinking it was weird and like, um, 
yeah, just messaging my friends about it and being like, uh, Trent's asking me for like a video of me hugging someone, like, I was confused, but I don't think he actually, I don't think I ever ended up sending that. In another message, he is asking for Oliver to send a video of them speaking. He really wanted to hear a video um, of my real voice, which I still, to this day, don't really know exactly what he was talking about, because that kind of implies that he had heard my voice, but he thought it wasn't my real voice. I'm not really sure. Maybe he only heard my singing voice or something. But yeah, he wanted to hear a video of my voice, and so I sent him, like two or three videos of me like talking that I just like had found from the past that were for some other reason and then he like he insisted that he wanted a special video from me like made for him um I think I ended up sending it I don't remember because I remember him being really insistent on it and reminding me multiple times when I would forget um, or just not do it. And to the point where he even messaged one of my friends on Twitter being like, oh, do they usually procrastinate? They need to send me their video. Can you tell them? Because they're not responding to my messages. I don't know, something along those lines. So yes, Trent is deaf, but at some point got a cochlear implant, which helped him to hear a little bit. The issue is that there is a lot of people online who seem to be using this as some kind of excuse for the messages that you've already seen and the ones that you will see going forward. I don't really understand why people are trying to use this as any kind of excuse because I don't see a situation where being deaf would make you text minors inappropriately. And I don't know how you could have such a low opinion of deaf people to think that not being able to hear or not having full hearing makes you act inappropriately and text these kind of things to young teenagers. There is no connection there. And I just want to be extremely clear, disabilities like that do not equal inappropriate behavior. And I will not be entertaining otherwise, because although I could sit here and go, oh sure, people have made this argument, it's a completely ridiculous and baseless argument, and all you're doing is stigmatizing people who are deaf or even just people with disabilities in general. There are people who have speculated as well that he has some other kind of mental issues, and I am not going to speculate on somebody's mental issues because I don't know. And even if that is the case, it still doesn't make this okay. Some people do bad things, whether they have any kind of mental or physical disability or not. Having some kind of disorder or mental disability or neurodivergency or anything else does not necessarily mean that you are going to do bad things. And a lot of people online seem to be just promoting this as truth, that this is the case. If you have these things, you're going to do bad things, and that's just the end of it. It's not your fault. That's not the way it works. And I won't get too much into this, of course there are scenarios where certain mental conditions can make you do bad things, but at the same time, it's not an excuse for those behaviours. And, to be perfectly clear, we don't know that Trent has any of these things. People are just seeing this as an excuse for bad behaviour. Again, it's actually just further stigmatising people with disabilities or with neurodivergencies or anything like that, and I will not be entertaining it. So let's move on. As you can see, a lot of the messages are just really bad. There is a lot of really inappropriate conversations being had between a man in his 30s and a child. There really is just so much stuff that's it's not even just questionable at this point, it's just downright gross. In fact, there are so many of these messages that I can't even show you them all in the time it takes for me to say this sentence. It just... it's endless. And eventually Oliver did realize that they were gonna have to cut communications with Trent. Eventually he ended up giving me his phone number um and that just... I mean I know there were already a lot of red flags that I was clearly just went right past me but or I just didn't know how to deal with them but this was 
I don't know, for some reason, when he sent me his phone number, it just, it like made my heart pound. Like I was like, okay, you know what? I think this is bad. Like this, this, this is, I don't think this is good. Like it, I just had that gut feeling. And the thing about that was I was already sort of mentally planning on how I would like gradually fade away from him if that made sense because it was often really stressful and like overwhelming for me to keep up with him and yeah like I said I just completely panicked when I like I knew it would be even harder to like fade away from him if it wasn't just Twitter DMs and it was also phone number because I couldn't just be like oh I wasn't on Twitter like it would it would just make things harder and then at the same also at the same time on top of that, I could feel that it was also inappropriate. Um, so I told my best friend at the time, the one that Trent was also talking to and, you know, the whole couple thing. Um, and I decided we or we both were on FaceTime. We decided to ask her mom for her opinion because I was too scared to ask my mom because I didn't I think I just I didn't want her to like lose trust in me or like think I wasn't being responsible or take away my phone or anything so we asked her mom and I forget exactly what she said but she basically just said that I needed to cut off communication with him and he wasn't being appropriate um and I think it was that moment that I knew like I trusted her she was an adult um and I yeah that's pretty much it and I think it was the same night if not the next day that yeah it was like th like three days after he sent me his phone number or somewhere around there we had this conversation with her mom and then that same day um i cut off communication with him i told him that i didn't feel it was appropriate um and then he said something short about how he didn't have bad intentions and then he blocked me and then that was the end of that and as we can see, Oliver now, with all of the attention on Colleen, has decided to release these messages to the public. When I saw Adam release his stuff, like, I think suddenly my Twitter, and usually my Twitter was like really dead because I barely used it. And suddenly I saw all these notifications about Colleen and like I saw Adam posted something. And I saw that instead of what it was like three years ago, this time people like a ton of people were in support of adam and i was like i don't really know how i just thought about the fact that i should post it but it just seemed like okay this seems like a really appropriate time to post this because i had thought about posting it before but i thought that people probably would just be defending colleen and her brother and you know i don't know like her fans would be defending it um but i saw all the support from x fan like people who were fans now supporting adam over this and i was like you know i think it i should get support um posting this and yeah i also just wanted to um you know warn people not and like when i say warn people like not just about him specifically, but just about how these sort of things can happen just in general. Um, and yeah, I just felt like I should, I should post it. As we did see before, especially with the Adam McIntyre situation from 2020, a lot of backlash can be given from Colleen's fans. As we know, back in 2020, Adam was absolutely despised by the internet and branded as a liar and a manipulator, all at age 17 because he decided to speak up about Colleen and her behaviour. So there's always the worry that when speaking up about these people and anybody involved, that the same could happen to you. Thankfully, though, this doesn't seem to be the case this time. I'm super appreciative of, um, and I've gotten a lot of opportunities to talk with people about it and, you know, have my voices be heard, um, or voices be heard. I don't have multiple voices. <laughs> have my voice be heard. The biggest backlash that I have received, um, well, there's actually two of them. So one is that I shouldn't be talking about this because he's disabled, which I won't even really get into that because I don't know all of his specific diagnoses or if he even has any other than that he's deaf and I think he's partially paralyzed or something, but um, 
re regardless, I think he still needs to be held accountable, and it's equally wrong, you know? Um, and, yeah. Then, and then the second thing is I've also, unfortunately, been receiving some not-so-great transphobia. Like, people saying that I'm trans because I was groomed, which doesn't really make sense to me, because we never talked about me being trans or anything. And I don't know what their logic is, but yeah, um, doesn't really make sense. Um, and a lot of misgendering, but you know, that's not really specific to this whole thing. It's just something I've always had to deal with, so. But other than that, it's been overwhelming, like, support. Um, and some other people have DM'd me saying that they've had messages from Trent too. They were just nervous about posting it. Um, or just didn't feel comfortable speaking up about it because it, it definitely is scary, especially when there's so many eyes on the situation right now. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I don't regret it at all, but you know, I understand why after them seeing how many eyes are on the situation, them not wanting to say something about it. There is also still the question of whether Colleen knew about her brother's behavior. And no, this video is not about her, but it is something that people want to know. As we saw earlier, Trent had said that his parents didn't want him speaking to anybody under the age of 18. And in a podcast, Johnny, who we have talked about before, shed some light on what this was actually about. He revealed that in 2012, before Trent got his cochlear implant to help him hear a bit, he would join these tiny chat video chats. These were things that Colleen and Josh would join with her fans, where they would talk with these young fans, or sometimes just go in and watch, because you didn't actually have to join the video chat, you could just view the video chat. So before Trent got his implant, he would just go in and watch. Trent didn't join for a while, and one day Colleen joins, and the young fans ask where Trent has been. Apparently, his parents were worried that he was joining the chats and forgetting to mute his own mic, and they didn't want anything to be picked up over the microphone that shouldn't be put out there. Now, whether that's just a normal privacy concern or they were saying things that really shouldn't have been put online and that could have gotten them into trouble, that's up for debate. But it is a bit weird that this was a concern that her parents had, but Colleen could just go in and say whatever she wanted. And according to Johnny, Trent did eventually start sneaking back into the tiny chats, but telling the young people in there, don't tell my parents and don't tell Colleen that I'm here. Trent actually confirmed that because he started sneaking back on tiny chats, which... Of course he did. Uh, and he would say things similar to what he said to Oliver, which is, don't tell my parents, don't tell Colleen, I'm not like he, to be And on here. very much acknowledging he knows it's wrong. <laughs> oh, yes. This doesn't answer whether any of Colleen's family or Colleen herself knew about him texting people privately or DMing, because I just sounded really old there, but it does give us quite an interesting insight. But bringing the conversation back to the main point, which is the conversations between Oliver and Trent. Unfortunately, Oliver is not the only person who has shared their experience in having inappropriate conversations with Trent Ballinger when they were underage and he was in his 30s. There are a couple of other people who have come out about this as well. There are people who just haven't come forward, either because they don't want to, or whatever reason. It's their business. But unfortunately, that means that this is not an isolated incident. And to be honest, having adults texting young kids, or young teenagers, not young kids, I guess, inappropriately is not an isolated incident either. These people are easy targets, they're young, and unfortunately, people will prey on that. But since there are so many young people online now, hopefully that means that at least a small percentage might be able to learn something from people like this who come forward with their stories. And no, I'm not saying the responsibility is on the teenagers, but it is a case of hoping that they're able to protect themselves in situations like this. I think my biggest piece of advice would be don't ignore red flags from someone just because you feel like you can trust them or because 
of their like status or I don't know if status is the right word, but like don't ignore red flags for any reason. There shouldn't ever be any reason to ignore a red flag. And I think that was the reason it was like really hard for me to see what was going on and to get out of that situation before I did because I would always just be like, oh, well, this is Colleen's brother. Like, who wouldn't want to talk to him? And, you know, I, it just, yeah, it didn't really, it just completely went past me. So that would be my biggest piece of advice. Don't ignore red flags. <laughs> there, there have been some people who have DM'd me saying that they've gone through similar things and that they didn't realize that it was like, that it like, the bell alarms like kind of hit off when they read my thread and that honestly just I feel so like I don't know how to explain it but like it means a lot to me that I was able to um you know make someone realize that they were going through something that also wasn't okay if that makes sense um and so yeah I'm just really grateful that I've been able to you know, help out people in any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Before you go, I just have something really important I wanted to say. Still got a couple of days left of the birthday fundraiser that I put a video out about before. I wanted to say thank you so much that we hit the initial goal so quickly. I was really, really happy with that and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you didn't watch that video, I'll link it in the description, but if you don't want to, long story short, I'm doing a fundraiser for my birthday for the International Rescue Committee for their campaign to help displaced families. These are families that have been displaced due to climate change, crisis, or disaster. So it's a really great cause. Um, if you want to donate, the link is in the description, please do. And anybody who donates $15 or more will get a shout out in an upcoming video. Beyond that though, do leave me a comment, let me know what you thought about everything discussed today. And if you don't want to comment about that, then just let me know how your day is going. I would love to know. Uh, like, comment, share, and very importantly, please do subscribe. Thank you. It really does help a lot. Uh, turn on notifications as well if you would like to while you're down there. And of course, have an absolutely wonderful day. I will see you in the next one. Bye.